Welcome to the short video on Akira ransomware. So Akira is a ransomware operation that is targeting currently both Windows and Linux based systems. And as per the virus alert that was released by certain on last Friday, this group has already targeted more than 16 companies in different verticals. And this ransomware operation is dubbed as Akira. So in this campaign, the attackers are trying to steal the information, they're trying to encrypt the data and then demand ransom from the victims. So studying this uh, virus alert that was published and a few more reference articles, I was able to map this attack campaign to the MITRE attack framework. So once you have done this threat modeling and once you have mapped the techniques of the attackers on the MITRE attack framework, it becomes easy to understand and to decode how the attack is carried out, what are the different stages and what tools and techniques and procedures are used during the different stages of this attack campaign. So from the, the certain here, I was able to uh, gather that the VPN services of an organization, if they do not have a multi-factor authentication enabled, or if you have a external remote service published to the internet, then the attackers, uh, and it does not have multi-factor authentication enabled, then this attacker group is targeting those services and gaining initial access into your network. Further, there is a mention of this these tools such as AnyDesk, WinRAR. So AnyDesk is a remote access software, and I'm assuming it is mostly used for uh, gaining persistence, maintaining persistence, and then also for command and control. WinRAR, I, it's, it's, since it's an archiving tool, I'm assuming this is mostly used uh, in the collection of data in exfiltration. PC Hunter, I'm assuming it's mostly used for maintaining persistence on the system. So based on this certain alert, um, certain had, had given some techniques and then rest of the techniques that I gathered here and populated here are based on the different reference articles that are um, published here at the end of the alert. So let, let's get started then to understand and to decode the, the various techniques that the attacker has employed during the different stages uh, of this attack. So this, this valid accounts, um, this is a technique where the attacker will try to mm, find out if there are any compromised user accounts related to your organization through dark web channels and through other uh, attackers. So attackers, they collaborate mm, on dark web, uh, selling and buying information about the organization. And then using credential farming is one of the techniques where the attackers might have gained uh, some valid accounts for your organization. And they're using these accounts then to gain initial access into your network. So reconnaissance and resource development is the pre-attack uh, stage, pre-attack uh, tactic where the attackers do all these kind of research and obtain the information, gather the information on the victim before the attack. So in the initial access, as I said, that from the certain alert, I have gathered that external remote services such as a VPN service. So we all know that organizations, they have this VPN service published over the internet so that um, the organization's users can connect remotely to the office network. Mm, for example, nowadays in a hybrid environment, you sometimes work from office, sometimes you work from home. So when you're working from home, you connect to the office network using a VPN agent that is sitting on your system. So if this VPN service is published to the internet by your organization and it does not have a MFA enabled, then this uh, will make your VPN service vulnerable to this Akira ransomware attack campaign. Another external remote service, uh, if I think of, can also be uh, scenarios where if an organization has users using softwares, remote access software, such as AnyDesk, AMI Admin, TeamViewer. So if you have these softwares installed on your system, on your uh, company system and if you're within the office network then you have a externally facing remote service published 
over the internet. And if you are using TeamViewer, AMI Admin, these kind of remote access softwares without a multi-factor authentication in place, then this will also make your organization vulnerable to this attack campaign. So, yeah, so, so that, that external remote service is the initial door through which the attacker will come into your network. And then in the execution stage, the exec for the execution tactic, the attacker is using some kind of PowerShell script to further compromise the machine. And then later on under persistence, the attackers are also seen installing these remote access tools on the system, such as AnyDesk, Kami Admin. They are seen installing these tools. So one of the tools that was seen and published by certain here in the alert was AnyDesk. So you install the tool on the system and then system publishes your connection to the internet and in that way attackers are trying to maintain persistence. Valid accounts we have already discussed using credential farming the attackers have uh, bought some uh, valid accounts of your organization and then they are targeting. Under defense evasion there are these, these four techniques that we seen used in this attack campaign. So under impaired defenses, there are these two sub techniques that is disable or modify tools and safe mode boot. Disable or modify tools simply means disabling the antivirus or disabling the endpoint IPS or endpoint firewall on the system. So that, that is about disabling and modifying tools. Safe mode boot is another technique of disabling these tools. So safe mode boot is a technique where the attacker will boot the system in a safe mode, uh, which is a Microsoft operating uh, system mode where all the third party software such as um, your antivirus and your third party firewalls or third party IPS software that you have installed on the system, they are disabled. And only the Windows specific services are enabled and the system is started. So this is mostly used for troubleshooting, but attackers are exploiting this, this uh, safe mode mode of the Windows operating system for uh, for evading defenses. Indicator removal, so after in this the attackers um, have been seen to clear persistence, that is to clear any tools that they have installed to further compromise the system, any scripts that they have installed in the execution stage, so they will clear that. It was seen in the indicator removal. In modify registry, attackers will try to create some registry keys which will help them to maintain persistence or they will try, for example, they will try to create some DNS uh, registry keys which will route your system's DNS traffic from the attacker's server. So those kind of, uh, or to elevate privileges, the registry is modified or to, uh, to, to find out um, or to add the attacker's tool into um, the antivirus exclusion folder. Um, that, that is also one way why registry is modified. So in this way, the attackers are seen using these three techniques to modify, uh, to, to avoid defenses. Under this technique, that is subvert trust control, the attackers are trying to disable this code signing policy. So by group policy, if you have uh, blocked the execution of unsigned scripts, unsigned EXEs, unsigned binaries, then the attacker script and EXEs will fail to run and the attackers will never go into the trouble of getting their script signed with a digital signature and certificate. So almost in every attack scenarios that I have seen, the attackers use um, unsigned scripts, unsigned binaries. Um, they, it, they are not digitally signed with a certificate or something and that is the reason uh, if you have this policy enabled, then that will prevent this execution and that is the reason attackers are then um, trying to disable this uh, policy from the registry so that they can run their unsigned scripts. So under defense evasion, these, these were the techniques that were seen. Under credential access, how the attackers are further trying to steal your credentials is by um, taking a LSAS memory dump. So LSAS.exe is a process you might notice if you open task manager on your system, which is responsible for handling local authentication. So whenever you log into your system, LSAS.exe handles your uh, authentication and then 
if you manage to take a LSAS dump, you will find hashes of the password or authentication tokens in the memory that the attackers then then collect and they can then further use different uh, attack methods to reverse engineer and find out your passwords from the hashes and tokens. So this was seen when uh, in this attack campaign that the attackers are using this technique to further gain more credentials. File and directory discovery, this was seen under the discovery tactic in the discovery stage where file and discovery directory discovery was performed. I am assuming that the attackers have performed this to study the directory structure of the system so that they can find out whether the system is a server or whether it is a usual workstation and finding some and also going through some directory structure they will try to find if the system has some confidential information if it does so that raises the hack value of the system and then accordingly they will plan the uh, compromise like if if the system is just a normal workstation then the attackers will make a decision to just um, turn it into a bot and use it to attack further systems and not do anything more on that system but if a system is a storage server if it is a file share server then the attackers um, through the file and directory discovery structure um, they will come to know about it and then they will know that this is a file share server and the hack value for this is more and if they compromise this uh, system with a ransomware encrypt the data then uh, they will be able to extract a bigger ransom from the organization so in that way this technique is used and this was seen uh, used in this attack campaign remote system discovery from the system that is compromised attackers will try to move laterally they will try to scan the subnet maybe by installing some uh, angry ip scanner on the system and try to perform a system discovery or maybe they will run some commands in the command prompt like netview to uh, further find out what all systems are running in that subnet and uh, comp and move laterally in the lateral movement from one of the articles that was published here by sophos in this, um, they have published that they, when they tested the sample in their test lab, they found attackers trying to move laterally from system to system using the remote desktop protocol. So in the lateral movement, this technique is seen. Under collection, um, as I, I, um, I was showing you here in the beginning of the video that uh, there is a mention of WinRAR and WinRAR is a zipping software, an archiving software. So the attackers, uh, so that is the reason this, this technique I have highlighted here, that archive via utility. Now this technique is you will try to archive via utility. Utility can be WinRAR, TAR, ZIP, 7-ZIP. Using these kind of programs, you will try to zip the information, compress the information so that it becomes easy to exfiltrate the information ready to be shipped out of your network. So that is the reason for compressing, for zipping the information. Um, the attackers have used this technique and in the all the malware samples um, that have been found out there and the attackers and the security researchers have run, they have found attackers using this uh, technique. Command and control remote access software. I have highlighted this technique because there is a mention of this AnyDesk software. So AnyDesk software um, will be used for both maintaining persistence and it can also be used for command and control. So by installing the software on a system, attackers maintain the control to the system and then they can send any commands, they can connect whenever they want. Exfiltration. So, so far all the samples that are seen out there in the wild and that the security companies have tested in their lab they have not seen any kind of exfiltration so far but as we see as there will be more and more sample found on the internet and then if any of the samples is using this exfiltration then this uh, technique will also be populated but so far whatever samples that were collected by the security researchers and companies and ran and in their test lab, they did not see any kind of exfiltration activity. So that is the reason I have not highlighted anything under this technique. Anything under this tactic, sorry. I have not highlighted any technique under this tactic. 
impact is the final stage, the final tactic. Under this, data encrypted for impact and inhibit system recovery. Both of these techniques were seen. Data encrypted for impact was seen. In the end, there is a green color screen that comes up giving you a, a logo of, of Akira. And uh, I will show you that here quickly. So if let me just scroll up. Yeah, this is the screenshot. So this is the screenshot that, that Sophos has published um, and they tested this malware in the in the lab. So in the in the end impact, uh, ransomware is, uh, data encryption was seen and then you get this green color screen which Give, which tells the victim that your data is encrypted and you should call uh, I'm sorry you should you should contact the attackers on this in this uh, chat channel and where you can make negotiations for ransom inhibit system recovery before uh, encrypting the data it was seen that the attackers have taken care of uh, deleting all the shadow copies the file history that you that you might have any local copies, backup copies that you might have on, on your system or servers. So this technique was seen that the ransomware, uh, that this malware, this group is trying to uh, employ this technique to delete all the shadow copies and backup uh, files that you might have for your data. And then it was seen encrypting the data. So I hope this, this uh, mapping of the Akira ransomware to this MITRE attack framework has helped you to understand how the initial access is obtained, what is uh, done in the execution stage, how the attackers are trying to maintain persistence, how they're trying to evade defenses, and then how they're trying to mm, collect the data, what is used to move laterally through the network, and uh, what remote, if, if any there is a mention of any desk, then why that tool is used by the attackers under the command and control and then the end impact. So in this way, once uh, you, so in this way, if, if you perform this kind of threat modeling, if you map uh, any attack campaign with MITRE attack framework, it becomes easy for you to design your defense mitigation strategy. Um, taking an example of external remote services here, since you, now from this uh, threat modeling, you know that External remote services is the initial access vector that is getting exploited in this attack campaign. Then two mitigation measures that come into my mind are, one is that if you have a VPN service of your organization, official VPN service, and if it is implemented without MFA, then please implement MFA. Second is if you allow installation of software such as AnyDesk, TeamViewer, AMI admin these kind of remote access software in your environment and if you allow the usage of them without multi-factor authentication then uh, your your organization is again vulnerable to this kind of attack campaign so you should take steps either to discourage users from using these kind of remote access software or if you're using a paid version of it then try to implement uh, multi-factor authentication so by by design or by default, these remote access software are not vulnerable. They are just uh, there to provide you a remote access functionality. And uh, so, mm, I mean, there, there is nothing bad in using TeamViewer or AMI admin or any desk. Um, they can facilitate and your remote access management and, and it's a useful tool, but implementing it uh, with a multi-factor authentication will save you from this uh, ransomware campaign okay then i will see you in the next video thank you for uh, staying with me on this video